let's let's move over to some of this Starfield talk, Nate, because this is this is the big game coming up for Microsoft. I mean, it, if you can look at it as the biggest game. I mean, in a, I'm trying to think of a bigger game. When was the last time we had one of these massive titles released for Xbox? That would be like generation defining. Because um, this is, I mean, this is it right here for them. I mean, generation defining. Yeah. I don't know if we've had that moment yet, unless we want to say Forza Horizon Five. But even then, you know, you know how people look at those games. It's a racing game. It's not a game of the year contender. All that stuff, right? I mean, this is a game that people have huge expectations for in Star. And it's Bethesda. Who I mean, they Bethesda should be angry right now. They should be out looking to prove themselves after what happened with Fallout seventy six and all this. So I I have high expectations for this as well as I think many other people do. But it came up that it's not going to have any kind of playable demo at Gamescom. They're going to have like a like a theater showing, I believe, for attendees. Now it is worth noting that this is going to be like a week before early access. So, and mm-hmm. obviously press will probably already be playing it and stuff anyway for review, but still it's, it's, it is interesting that one people have asked about the marketing for this game and why it's been kind of sparse for such a big title. And two, why they wouldn't try to have some sort of playable slice of the game for people at Gamescom. It is there an issue here for Microsoft? Should, should they be pushing this game more, whether it's in uh, on TV on ads for YouTube, basically anywhere they can for gamers. I mean, right now, from this minute of recording, we are three weeks from early access beginning. Mm. Are you aware Starfield is coming out? No, I didn't know it. No, yeah, I mean, obviously, we had this. Right. We had this thing with um, Zelda, right? Where Zelda, there was exactly. like no real marketing for. It. Everyone was like, "What's going on with mm-hmm. marketing? What's going on with marketing?" And the game came out and like exploded and- in sales. Right. I would say, I think people, their concept of time is warped due to our 24-7 news mm-hmm. cycle. That they don't seem to really recollect that we had a 45-minute deep dive right. just over a month ago. It, it does. It feels like that was a long time. Doesn't that feel like it was a while ago, though? <laughs> it does feel as though it was a long time, but it wasn't that long ago. I know. And the majority <laughs> of fans who are interested in Starfield... They know they're getting the game day one. Like, yes, there's going to be that casual audience that you still have to market the game to, and you have ample time still to do that. They released the animated shorts on YouTube, which have millions of views, so that reached an audience. And as for Gamescom not having a playable demo, we don't know how easy the game is necessarily to demo. How much... What would you show people? You're not going to show you know, the customizations options for your character. So you're just going to drop them in a planet where you can explore. You're just going to put them in space and say, uh, go around this, yeah, this sector is, of the solar system. This is a and, hard game to demo, oh, isn't it? Yes, it's an exceptionally hard I, game to demo. And that's why I think a, a theater presentation with a trailer of whatever kind just to generate some hype is more than enough. And I feel as though the only reason Starfield's marketing is under attack right now is because San Diego Comic-Con came. We got a new trailer for Spider-Man 2. And all of a sudden, everyone was sitting there saying, well, how come Microsoft isn't making Starfield an event? But they had. They had done so in June. We don't need to market games six months in advance anymore. Like when you and I were younger, where we would pick up a copy of EGM, Game Informer, Next Generation Magazine, and be plastered with numerous print ads. There was like a lagging effect back then, you're right, where Mm -hmm. the magazine would be made three months or something before we would even be able to see it on store shelves. And it, there was a lot going on trying to sync up that timing. Whereas now they click a button that says go live and we have it in front of us like minutes later. Right. And like the Twitter account is active. There are buses in some regions that have a huge Starfield ad. So the marketing is out there. Like, yes, it maybe it, maybe they haven't begun the television ad campaign which they only have to begin really 10 days in advance of the early access period. They don't need to go any further beyond that. And I think it's just that people are looking for something to critique the game with right now because they feel as though it's it's a bad faith argument. This isn't coming from the Xbox circles. It feels as though it's coming from external circles who are just arguing for the sake of belittling the Xbox leading up to its major release for the generation well let me ask you this do you think uh we're talking about advertising do you think for example we see 
a commercial for Starfield on opening night for the NFL. That's on September 7th, so the day after <laughs> it comes out. I'm just saying, that seems like a good spot. I'm, I'm just wondering it if does. I'm going to be watching that game and Starfield's going to pop up as a commercial. You know what? I'm going to say there will be a Starfield commercial that night. I feel like I'm having deja vu. There's going to be had... a Starfield commercial. <laughs> I'm having deja vu. Weren't there rumors of Starfield at the Super Bowl? Was that were there? <laughs> I think so. Oh man, I think I think that's a good spot. Hey, drop it there. Spend the money. If they've been saving up this whole time and that's their big push, that's probably one of the best spots they can drop it. There you go. Starfield commercial. Play it now. You know what? You don't even need the Xbox. I saw that Samsung ad, and that was the whole thing. The, like the big catch at the end was, you don't even a console. You can just you can just start up the gaming <laughs> hub app right now on on the, your Samsung TV. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and do it. Uh, right there simple to the point and i mean yeah we could potentially see it at that first football game but i'm gonna say in those last two weeks of august we're going to see a significant lead up to the early access period mm-hmm. because even those with game pass you and i included you have to admit there's there's a bit of a temptation to pay that was it 30 dollars to get the deluxe version yeah a week early yeah Yep, because it's sitting right there. Be like, do I really want to wait a week to experience Starfield? Everyone else is going to be talking about it, but I can get it on Game Pass. But for only thirty dollars, I can play it a week early. I can dive in. I can be part of the day one conversation. And we saw how well this worked for Microsoft with Forza Horizon Five, where they had well over a million people pay into the early access period. Starfield is probably going to eclipse that easily. I hate the early access period. By the way, the game's ready. Just launch it. The game's ready. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> it's you're not wrong. It's ready but... to go. Uh, I mean, they've been, this has been a thing for so long. Uh, but I, either way, I, you're right. There's going to be like that FOMO of everyone's going to be playing this game. I, I want to play it now. I'm going to spend $30 on top of my Game Pass subscription. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's... Uh, it, it is there is that question of how much they have to advertise the game itself or can they just advertise the service with the game attached to it? But I feel like yeah. if you have a game like Starfield, you parade that thing out constantly. Look, look, especially if it right. gets the reviews. If it gets something in the '90s, I mean, there should there should be Starfield everywhere. Starfield Game Pass everywhere, yes. right? And that would start up once those reviews do drop. Which, sure. Let's say it would probably be the week, a few days ahead of the early access period. So that's what you're going to make those TV campaigns all about. You're going to have. 10 out of 10 mm-hmm. IGN, 9.5 GameSpot, 10 out of 10 Game Informer. You want to do that review accolade type of trailer where you just hammer in, this is a game of the generation in sight PC gamer. So people see the trailer and say, whoa. We need to come up with a catchphrase so we show up in those things. We do. We do. Yeah, hmm. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll, our rating will be worth the download. There you go. Worth the download. Worth the download. Spawncast. <laughs> That doesn't uh, explodes towards it. <laughs> it's a little better than that. Ah, all right. Uh, I, you know, I, I think they're going to be fine with Starfield when it comes out. I, I would like to see a little more advertiser. Why not? Why not? They're, they're, they should be confident. Well, yeah. They should be confident. Throw but, out the, throw out the advertising money. But you see to counter that, aren't they already advertising with the headset, the controller? Yeah, I guess they kind of are, but there has been that type of marketing. It just feels as though people want to be bombarded with a new hype trailer every week. And I really think it comes back down to that Spider-Man 2 trailer at Comic-Con. Had that not happened, I don't think the conversation you know around Starfield marketing you know what's interesting, would be as though, loud. Nate, I, I swear, I, I see sometimes these companies can go too far with the advertising and people Final don't want to see it anymore. I was going to say Deathloop. But sure, you could say sixteen, where where people just don't want to see it anymore. So there is there is this tightrope of how much do we show before it becomes overexposed. So it's Deathloop was tough. overexposed, and you and I said it when Deathloop finally came out and we got to play the game. None of the marketing did the game justice. Nah, it didn't. It, it wasn't what I thought the game was going to be. And to Final Fantasy sixteen's point, by the last by the time the game finally came out. I was overseeing media. I was ready to just go on a, you know, a blackout. Right. I'd seen enough of the game. I knew I wanted it. And I have a feeling Bethesda is approaching the marketing of Starfield in a very similar way. We showed you an hour of gameplay. You have seen the trailers. If you have interest in this game, you already know you're there day one. We don't need to sell you on it. And that's going to be millions of individuals. The people we have to convince will do in those upcoming weeks, 10 days before launch, 
and then throughout the duration of September, and then again leading into the holiday. They're going to do this very calculated. Maybe it will mirror what Nintendo did with Tears of the Kingdom to a certain extent. But I'm not concerned about the marketing at all. Those interested in the game know it's coming.